Saturday the 19th of October 2013 and we're live at Ugg Camp. <laughs> In this episode we're going to discuss the latest tech news and discuss the decline of Ubuntu. I'm Laura and joining me for this very special live podcast are Tony. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever we are. <laughs> Les. Wasn't paying attention. Hello. Mark. Hello. Alan. Hiya. <laughs> And Dan. Or eat. <laughs> so, what have you enjoyed today? You're all looking at me. Um, I'm just looking that direction. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, I've enjoyed finally getting to have a go on the arcade machines outside. Uh, I just played Captain America and the Avengers and died on level three, if anyone wants to know. I like the bag making, scraping paint thing. Oh, yeah. Cre- it it brought printing. out the creative side in me following a simple instruction of dragging a thing towards me. And uh, I got a bag out of it. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, those are quite cool. The design was done by the ladies who are running the stand. And it's quite fantastic. I think it's like a fiver for the bag, but you get to print it yourself. So it's really quite cool. And a poster. And a poster. I didn't get a poster. You go back and ask her. You can have mine. (laughs) Mark. I enjoyed getting to watch some talks this year because last time I was too busy running around trying to stop things going wrong. (laughs) 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 What about you, Les? I've enjoyed the Minecraft crane today. It's been really good. It's That's good the crane oh, yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. How that, does it work? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> it's, just, it's an Arduino and magic. That's all I know. Yeah, you've got three levers and they only move up and down. And if you get the right combination, it goes in lots of different directions and physically up and down. Right. As he it says, it's you, magic. You sound, thrilled. <laughs> you sound thrilled by that, Tony. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. This is an introduction to Tony and Laura's life. <laughs> Laura explaining something and Tony just going, what? Yeah. Most of the time. I have to shower. What? <laughs> Don't know about that. What about you, Laura? Uh, I enjoyed Freaky Clown's talk just now. Quite yeah. scary, but... <laughs> yeah, lots of people did. In fact, even more people than are here now, which says something. <laughs> 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 but yeah, hopefully the FBI won't come and get you. What about you? Um, yeah, I enjoyed... Um, waiting for Adam Sweet to turn up this morning or uh, this afternoon as it was um, don't break with tradition yeah exactly you know, he managed to keep the long tradition of odd camps of being very very drunk on the first night and then very very hung over on the, uh, the second day and uh, well it's and uh, yes thank you to our sponsor yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> transitive technologies there like it's only because he you, that's Liverpool Council Health Department who paid for that it's only because his last words to me last night were, Doctor Who is a kid's show. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of right, though. <laughs> right. Shall we get on with the show? Let's do that. And now it's time for the news. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't intend it to be that funny. Uh, so first of the news this week, Google have started offering bounties for patches to non-Google open source projects. So the, the projects which they're talking about are, um, are core infrastructure projects or key components of Google Chrome, uh, high-impact software libraries, and parts of Linux, including KVM. Um, and they're specifically looking at security patches for this. And um, so people contributing those security fixes can then apply to Google and get money for them. Do you think we can get Campfire Manager included in that list of <laughs> software that we could get? I think it is, it's core infrastructure. Yeah. Right. Just the one then. Okay. <laughs> it's our core infrastructure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It might not be Google's. So why are they doing this? I guess because they, they benefit have truckloads of money. Yeah, they've got lots of money and they benefit from open source, so they might as well make it more secure or help make it more secure. Or they're really just the good guys. Oh, yeah, I remember that was their slogan, isn't it? Do no evil unless we're told to by the government. Yeah, don't yeah. be evil. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. it's not an evil thing to do, is it? Encourage people to contribute security patches? No, I suppose not. <laughs> so how much can you get for this? What's the reward? Um, the reward is from $5,000 to th- $3,133.70, which is because the 1337 is leet, I think, is the, is the joke there. 
but there's a three in front of it, which kind of spoils it. Oh, elite. Okay, yes, now I get it. <laughs> I'm not used to seeing it in an unabbreviated form. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, Dan, you're up next. Why don't you tell I us am? about the oh, next news right. story? <laughs> I didn't even know that. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so yeah, so Oracle have released a paper entitled, is that right? Am I reading the right thing? Yeah. Yes, okay, that's good. Good, good. Um, Oracle have released a paper entitled The Department of Defense and Open Source Software. So they're the telling the Department of Defense that open source software is a really good idea, I presume. Yeah, it would, well, it seems like it. Um, the paper warns against the Department, of, the Department of Defense saving money by starting... Well, apparently you're wrong. I should have read this before. You can tell now that I have not never seen this story before. Um, <laughs> By st uh, yeah, they should uh, warns them against saving money by starting with open source software and developing their own applications. Paying a company like they should pay a company like Oracle instead. Mm. Um, they also warn that open source technologies may not scale well, and Oracle finished by saying that buying open source solutions is okay, but you'd be better off with one of their proprietary products. Specifically, buying one of their open source solutions yes. is okay because they've obviously now got a lot of open source software which they've now just told us is rubbish. Yeah, they like that if, you, if they can get you to upgrade to one of their proprietary solutions later, I think. Um, that seems to be their business model. Start with MySQL, which they've renamed like Fisher-Price My First Database or something. Um, <laughs> and that's the way they sell it. And then they go, when you're ready for a real database, come and see us. You know. So that's an independent report that they had commissioned. Oh, yeah, 100% independent. <laughs> Son's legacy really is in safe hands, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, and very exciting games news. Anybody into gaming here? Uh, we all know how Tony loves his games. Yeah, right. Okay, so apparently something called Humble Bundle with Android 7 has been released. And in this Humble Bundle includes Worms Reloaded. Don't know what that is. Bard's <laughs> Tale. No you idea. Worms is. Ticket to Ride. It's not what Laura told me. <laughs> <laughs> Other words that include things like Incredipede. <laughs> Sounds like something from Operation Bless. U Tree and um, Anodyne, which sounds like this news story. So, <laughs> <laughs> there are games for Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android on these. Worms 2 for Android instead of Worms Reloaded. So, you can get it on a number of different platforms. If you're really into games, the Humble Bundles are apparently a really good way to get a load of a variety of games at a very cheap price, Alan. When you've not dropped your laptop. That's not the first time he's dropped Am I the only one who buys Humble Bundles? Does everyone buy Humble Bundles? Okay. Lots of people buy Humble Bundles. I okay. buy Humble Bundles. Good. I've got lots of Humble Bundle games on here. I buy them and then I never play any of them because oh, really? I never have time. Well, I, I, I already have Worms Reloaded, which I, I play through Wine because I've got it on Steam, and it, but now it's out for Linux, which is great. And also Worms 2 on the tablet. I love Worms 2. It's brilliant. I, the only reason I seem to have them is to, I don't know, to prove that I, you know. That someone, someone pays for games on Linux. Yes. Do your kids yes. play them? Uh, no. Oh. Do, they know that, do they know that you've got all these games which they could be playing? No, I don't let them get on my computer at all, no. They have their own EPCs that aren't powerful enough to run anything at all. Uh, and, and they use my, my Xbox. So, yeah, no, I don't let them near my computers at all. So all the people who put their hands up saying that they're into gaming and they buy hum humble bundles and stuff, who are they, who's actually playing any of those on Linux? A, a subset, but a significant subset of it, yeah. Okay. For the benefit of the audio, we should say a fair few people. A fair few, yeah. about half, About half of the people. All of them. Everyone put their... More people ran in from outside and put their hand up because <laughs> they heard the question. It's so popular. Yeah. Yeah. Except Tony. <laughs> I stayed where I am. Right, Les, I think you've got the next story. What's it all about? Exciting news. Ubuntu 1310 has been released. Yes! Who's tried it yet? Two, three. So, to be fair, it was released Alan? about two days ago. Everyone put their hand up. That's amazing. People came running in from outside. to. Yeah. Uh, For the benefit of the audio, only five people put the hand up. No, 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 no. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Not quite as many people came running in. So what, what's new in 310, 1310, Les? Sorry, gone back in time ten years there. <laughs> Well, 13.10 has been lots of development for the phone, which is now using uh, Mia, is it? Or yeah. Mia? Mia. Cool. <laughs> but not on the desktop. No. no. No, no Mia on the desktop. When you said Mia, people went, <laughs> yeah. Well, I've heard it been called a Mir this week. Mer. Mer. Isn't that some Gold, sort of incense? frankincense, and yeah. Mia. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Did three wise men bring it? <laughs> that's, that's debatable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
What else? Yeah, there's more search scopes for the Dash. So, so now you, you don't just automatically search Amazon, you also automatically search every other website. Every other sales website. Yeah, we basically take all of your key presses, send them to the internet, <laughs> and then just see what comes back. It's, uh, uh, it's what the NSA do, to be yeah, fair. Well, exactly, yeah. We were thinking we'd just send it all to Reddit, and then you'd just get pictures of cats coming back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that would actually be a feature people would pay for. <laughs> just more cats on my desktop. Is that please. going to be your new Ubuntu Touch app? Yeah, I think it is actually. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'll write that in the car on the way home. I think question for Popey though. What? What's an incentive to upgrade to thirteen ten? Uh, stability bug fixes, and uh, if you're obsessive compulsive about having the latest version of everything, which lots of people apparently are. And they're just like, upgrade everything and nag whenever the new release isn't out yet. It's like is your answer to re really that if you're into upgrading, you should upgrade? Is that really the answer? If you're an upgrade whore, you would really do it. To be fair, why do people use, why do people use Arch apart from that? Yeah. Because they love upgrading all the time. <laughs> so can we also recommend people using Windows 8 to, rec to upgrade to 8.1 because they love upgrading and it can spend four hours downloading the upgrade? Do you know, in the hash Ubuntu-UK, the UK Loco channel, on release day, there were more people talking about Windows 8.1 than there were talking about 13.10. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. That's not good. We need to fix that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but were they saying good things? Hmm? Were they saying good things? Uh, well, they were talking about the download speeds and, uh, well, the, just the fact that we're talking about Windows 8.1 seems a bit broken to me. But hey-ho, each to their own. Freedom of speech and all that. Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, following on from that, uh, here, Mark Shuttleworth my boss, has announced the next release of Ubuntu will be codenamed Trusty... How do you pronounce that? Tar? T-A-H-R. Tar. Apparently, it's a type of goat. Yes. Dave where's, two, where's Dave right. 2? Dave 2 likes goats. There he is. <laughs> he's, he's very happy with this second run-in for goats because the intrepid ibex was apparently a goat. I thought it was an antelope, but it's actually a goat. So Mark seems to like goats, like you, Dave. Uh, former boss, Mark. Uh, yeah, former <laughs> boss, Mark Shuttleworth. <laughs> I'm also looking for work. Uh, and Mark has managed to irritate a chunk of the community in the process. How's this? What's wrong with the name Trusty Tar? Well, it wasn't so much that. It was more the rest of his blog post. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> you might want to go and read it. Right. Um, Aaron Saigo from the KDE Project has challenged Mark to an open debate on a podcast of Ooh. some type. So, so you've been yeah. to UK it, podcast? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think that's independent enough for Aaron. <laughs> no, probably and not. Probably doesn't get enough views for... What yeah. did this say about KDE? Uh, I don't think he said anything specifically about KDE. Uh, it was more, uh, he kind of lashed out at uh, uh, everyone not Ubuntu, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, it didn't go down well. And, you know, he's an individual. He's entitled to his own opinion on his own blog. But, you know, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> um, US website healthcare.gov breached the license of an open source jQuery plugin by removing copyright notices. Um, so it was apparently released under quite a liberal license, which didn't really require much else other than they kept the copyright notice and they didn't keep the copyright notice. Is this why they yanked it down off of GitHub? I, I think, I think there's, there's sort of a few reasons, and this is part of the general uh, furore over it. Um, Spry Media, who wrote the plugin, are extremely disappointed with the breach, although Russia today um, said that they are planning to sue so um, I'm not sure who to believe. Russia Today are planning to sue? Or no, 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 Russia Today reported that Spry Media are planning to sue. Oh, good luck with that. Yeah. It's, it's a shame, they, uh, really. They're rolling in money, the US government, <laughs> I hear. <laughs> Great target for suing. <laughs> it's a shame, really, when, you know, when people can't, like, I mean, you actually Why have to... Why can't we all just get along, No, Mark? but you have, to, you have to actually make an effort to remove the copyright notice from the source code. And why bother? It's only, you know, DD, isn't it? One line, invite. There you go, gone. It's not that much effort, is it? Yeah, but you, it's more effort than doing nothing, yeah, which while is you're the there, default position. You know, you're already, like, tailoring the thing for your site. You're integrating it into your back end. You know, it's one line. Well, that doesn't look interesting or important. DD, gone. It's, it's not that much effort. Okay, okay. I'm, saying, I'm not saying it's a good thing to do. Do I need to get in the middle here? Am I going to have to separate <laughs> you guys? <laughs> well, just, you know. Yeah, it's a bad thing, but I don't think... I, I'm not convinced it was malicious. I think it was just a... Accidental. Ah, we don't need that. <laughs> get rid of that line of code. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> said nobody ever. <clears throat> says Alan. And finally... 
Following on from the example set by Netflix and the online premiere of, well, it says here House of Hearts, which I'm assuming is a typo. <laughs> That's a very different, very different series. <laughs> That is not what I typed. Otherwise, we're back to Les's video collection again. That's one of my videos, yeah. But apparently the BBC are going to try the same thing as Netflix did with House of Cards, and they're going to put some content online first but before it's broadcast on you know, your actual proper telly and all that. Sorry. Haven't they already done that, though? There have been series that have been premiered. Yeah. They premiered a couple of programmes on the iPlayer a week before they were on BBC One or whatever, earlier in the year, I'm sh- I thought. Maybe that was because they, they did an announcement recently about sort of the brave new world of iPlayer. So maybe that's sort of a pilot for this, this, new, this new scheme because they're talking about having it so you can basically make your own TV schedule on iPlayer and just stream stuff when you want it, which will involve some of the stuff that is going to be broadcast anyway being on iPlayer first. Okay, well, that sounds good. And those newly rediscovered Doctor Who episodes, you know, have been... <laughs> which will be sold by BBC Worldwide... Right, which have been put on iTunes before they've been... They're not going to be re-aired. I guess that, well, either they've been put on iTunes before they've been released on DVD or 45 years after they were first broadcast. But yeah, the idea of making those available on iTunes for a DRM encumbered download is interesting. Did you, get, did you get them from iTunes? No, I don't have iTunes. Oh. So, I'll watch them when they come out on DVD. It's all right, he's got them, he's got them on VHS from when they were first on. Yeah. Yeah, we've got video proof that you've got VHS tapes. <laughs> what Tony's not saying is he gets a reel-to-reel and his projector out and he sets it up. Puts his hat and his scarf super, on. Super 8 or something. <laughs> a little bit of celery in his pocket. Starting to regret bringing this up now. Thank you, guys. Right, okay, that's the end of the news. Well, we had a very exciting competition to colour in our Og Camp bags, which were apparently a very dull, plain white bag, and uh, quite a few people have done so. So here are some of the examples. Has anybody else got a bag they want to submit? So they they drew. Uh, on? Yeah, I've got one. I've got one. Uh, here. Okay. I've used a psychic paper though. <laughs> so. <laughs> so it will win. This is a bit like your touch.index.html. Yes, yes, minimalist, yes. Right, okay. So anyway, lots of lovely people who actually put some effort in. <sighs> Six years, it's been fun. Yeah, we're, we, we're currently uh, displaying a, a, bag, a table full of bags for the benefit of the tape. <laughs> They're colourful can we, bags. Can we get like, live commentary on this as it's going on? Yep, Laura's yeah. walking around the front of the table. Uh, so we've got to work out which one's best. So I'm going to hold them all up, and I think probably she should just cheer. Oh, clapometer. Have we got a yeah. clapometer? Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> we got, sorry. We, yeah, we there's one either side of your head, Dan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I am the human clapometer. Yeah. So Dan's Dan, the judge. Dan's the judge, basically. Oh, yeah. thanks. Thanks for that, yeah. <laughs> we all stepped back really quick then. <laughs> maybe, okay. maybe Laura, describe the bags as you hold them up for the audio listeners. Yes, for the audio listeners. We've got one that's got a Raspberry Pi on it with sparkly leaves. Cool. And sparkly dots. We provided uh, lots of different coloured glitter, so that's where the sparkles are from. So we've got that one. Okay. Very Applause. Nice. Any votes? <laughs> this could take some time. We've got Alan's contribution. Ooh. Don't clap for that. <laughs> Check is in the post. Check is in the post. People actually booed. <laughs> <laughs> there might be other reasons for that. <laughs> uh, we've got one that's been covered with sugar paper, coloured paper, and then a poster from the uh, bag printing stall has been cut up. So and they vandalised the posters off the wall. <laughs> Possibly, or it might have been one of the spares. It's Creative Commons, Mark. You're a proper um, glass half empty mixing. kind of guy, aren't you? <laughs> and then stuck loads of stickers on it from the goodie bag. Yeah, so those stickers have gone from the inside, inside of the bag to the outside. To the outside. Of the bag. Right. So, that's oh, a lot so of hard. Out there. <laughs> so, I've got one here that's uh, lots of sugar, different coloured paper and glitter making a collage. And on the back it says, where's Fab? Oh. So. And it's an awesome, like, Space Invaders. Oh, Space Invaders. Oh, oh, oh. And Windows. Oh, yes, I like sorry. That. Windows logos. Oh, sorry, yes, it's a cape on the back. 
Yes, the cake's alive. Cake on the back. Oh. Do you know, I never noticed their Windows logos that it's actually breaking. I like that. That's cool. <laughs> Some cheers there. <laughs> Next up, a Scraper Wiki themed one because there were stickers in the bag. With a robot on the back. And it's got a robot on the back. And it has a robot on the back. Because yeah. robots are okay. cool. What do you think of that one then? <laughs> Spider's web <laughs> in sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. More dots, but all silver this time. Ooh. Brightly coloured sparkles, and even brighter. And on a the fedora bag. logo made out of glitter. Oh yeah. One person. I think we know where all the glitter went. Odd <laughs> uh, camp rules. True. Carbon footprint, Raspberry Pi, and Linux. Okay. Mm. Must say that the, there's a whole range of ages represented here. <laughs> uh, Camp 13. What's on that? Uh, there's a fire, is that a Firefox? Could be. Oh, yes. Or a cat. Or a cat. It could be, it could be Scratch. <laughs> That's definitely a strawberry or a raspberry. It, That's a raspberry pie. It says here, it's my Ice Weasel, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> it says here, my dad yeah. loves... Something. And there's a carbon Sorry. footprint at the top as yeah. well. So anyway. There we go, that's cute. And last but not least, we've got our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Did they all colour this in themselves? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Wow. Yeah. Could be a tactical win there. <laughs> <laughs> so we got that one. There you go. Over I to would you, say Dan. in my capacity as human clapometer that the Space Invaders and the very glittery Fedora one were both clearly more popular than the others so far. Right. Can, we, uh, can we, Simon Cowell style, eliminate the others? Now? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Space Invaders and which one, Dan? Uh, the glitter, uh, glittery one. one, the glittery right, fedora. With all one. the glitter yeah. in the world on it. Does that seem fair? I thought they were the most popular. And the which no, one? Don't ask for other opinions. Do uh, well, sorry, no, that is fair. You'll like it or or else. Okay, um, right. So we're down <laughs> to the final two. We need to okay, pick so one. Can we do a, a comparison? Yep. And clap for each one, maybe. Well, I'll hold one up and I'll hold the other one up as well. Apparently, <laughs> 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 can't get the staff. And what's the what's the prize? Prizes are right here on the table, and um, it's uh, very exciting, so uh, don't panic that it's okay, not in your sorry. bag anymore, Laura. Right, I'm going to hold these up. Are we going to do like an A and a B? Yeah, I think so. Okay, you, you talk, and I'll hold. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, then. So, are we going to do them separately, though? Let's do... Okay, so let's have a clap for this uh, glitter... No, sorry, the Space Invaders one first, if you like that one the most. Okay. All right, that, that's pretty good. And then the glittery one, glittery fedora one. Uh, anyone? Anyone to go for that? <laughs> We've got more whistles for that, so I'm going to say that the glittery one should win. Excellent. But, but so really, we're, every, we're all the winners. <laughs> we're all winners. So, Nicola and Timothy Wellington. Are they Where here? Are you? Do you oh, here we go. Here. Come on awesome. down. Because there's two of you, we've got another one and we'll bring it for you tomorrow. Are you here tomorrow? Are you here tomorrow? Okay, oh. in which case, uh, don't, don't, run, don't rush off at the end and then we'll give it to you. Oh, Matt will take okay, it to you. Yes. We will we'll give you one each. Yeah. So there you go. You have a prize each. It's a very okay. exciting light Do you want to you plug play? into a USB port. <laughs> 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 I hope you've got one of those. So thank you very much indeed to everybody who took part. There'll be some fantastic efforts going on there. Fortunately, there can only be two winners, apparently. And, uh, <laughs> but that's great. Thank you very much indeed.
are we witnessing the decline of Ubuntu? Bruce Byfield wrote a post last month about the decline of Ubuntu from his position, citing the lack of Ubuntu TV, failure of the crowdfunded Edge campaign, privacy concerns, as indication that, in his words, Canonical and Ubuntu seem to have been shipping, slipping from the position of leadership they had in their earliest years. Discuss. Popey? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, this is tricky. Um, I, I've been... I, people keep telling me that, you know, that's it, I'm leaving for Arch, or that's it, I'm leaving for Fedora, or Mint, or Sorry, Debian, should we, should we or... just say for anyone who doesn't know that you work for Canonical? Yeah, I work for Canonical. If, yeah, if anyone doesn't know, Alan works for Canonical. And yeah. None of the rest of us do, though. Yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> 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 I, I haven't done a survey, so I don't know. If, if, if there's lots of people leaving, or if it's just people who feel so vocal on the internet that they feel they have to tell everyone, that's it, I've left. You know, in the same way that some people feel the need to tweet at someone when they're unfollowing them. You know, you annoy me so much that I'm no longer going to follow you and I'm going to tell you that because I'm so cross. Goodbye, click. You know, that kind of thing. People who slam doors on the way out, that kind of thing. And I, d I don't know if it's that or whether it's everyone's leaving. To be fair, we've actually discussed this on the show quite a few times before. Every release, there's this vocal... You know, some people who don't like something will say, that's it, I'm leaving. Um, and people take that as a symbol that lots of people are leaving because some very vocal people are leaving. So is, uh, has something changed, which you know, it's now actually more serious than it used to be? Or is it just the same thing that we've always seen? I, I honestly don't know. I, I, you know. The people who say stuff like, I'm leaving because of X, some people it's the same thing. <laughs> or Mia. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Uh, I meant like because of reason X variable, you know, like <laughs> it X. could be unity, for example. Yeah. There was a lot of people who, who split off and went somewhere else because they like GNOME 2 uh, or the GNOME 2 look. And so they didn't like unity. And so they, they went or it could be that the unity was buggy and they wanted something that was more reliable. Or it could be that they had a machine that didn't have the hardware capabilities to run unity. You know, there's, there's a myriad of reasons, but you can pin it all on one thing. Unity as the reason why, you know, people left. I don't know. That's what some people say. Can you not tell from your download stats, though? If you, I mean, if you lose in downloads, isn't that going? Probably, on? yeah. But I don't have visibility of those. I mean, what we do see is in we have a, an IRC channel called Ubuntu Release Party, right? And it used to be, yeah, I know it's very sad. I mean, an IRC. <laughs> I realise when I say it out loud, it sounds very sad. We have an IRC party channel, but <laughs> like, <laughs> yay party! There's late night uh, adverts on cable TV. Join <laughs> the IRC Ubuntu release party channel. <laughs> Join now. Chat live with real developers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In uh, your area. <laughs> <laughs> and it used to be that years ago, that channel would be a thousand people. On at the release point with people repeatedly asking, is it out yet? Is it out yet? Is it out yet? And, you know, it was fun and there was a bot in there that would tell them every time they said, is it out? They would say, no, the release time has been nudged back 10 minutes because you asked. You know, that kind of <laughs> stupid stuff like that or it's, you know, 8 o'clock Western Samoa time or something. Was that because there were lots of things wrong that they, we, that they needed fixing? Not in a party channel. In the party channel, it was just representative of people who were interested yeah, but in the release. That release as opposed to later releases where it's just a bit more meh, new release. I don't know. Maybe there's, there's less excitement now because... Are you putting your hand up? I am. Oh, okay. We can still see Do you one want to go to the still, toilet? This should still work. Okay. Yeah, true. Uh, I just thought it was odd. That's all. all right, uh, well, would you rather I butt it in? Yeah. All right, then. Well, um... <laughs> Uh, what, I, what I'm wondering is um, whether it's just the the kind of um, like maybe maybe the the kind of the kind of sorry the kind of users who are willing to join an IRC release party aren't the kind of users who are sort of excited in Ubuntu now. Maybe it's more of the the people who are getting the pre-installed laptops from stores in China. Maybe it's um, you know corporate deployments rather than the sort of geeky power users who are now more attracted to something like Arch or Fedora or something else for whatever reason that it suits them better. Um, maybe Ubuntu isn't declining. It's just that its core user base is shifting. Mark gave a talk in 
Brussels about three years ago where he was talking about leaping the chasm from the early adopters and the people who are like techie and geeky and we need to get across the chasm to mass adoption and it was trying to aim to do that with unity and with you know some of the other initiatives and uh, yeah, measure of whether they're successful or not I do not know but yeah I think there is a certain level of people who are very technical like most of the people in this room and the kind of people who listen to the podcast are a lot of that demographic are very technical people and they're the kinds of people who will make a decision about their distro and choose and switch whereas your average joe like my mum doesn't even know there are other distros is your mum called joe no <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be a girl's name couldn't it of course yeah. i shouldn't short for josephine <laughs> anyway <laughs> sorry yeah uh, carry on uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. Maybe it is those technical people that you say who are leaving, and they're the kinds of people who would sit in an IRC channel. But, but it's not good to lose all your technical people. Yep. You need those in a community-supported yep. uh, So right now, we have a community council, which has no people on it. Right. We have a technical board that has yes. no people on it. Does it not have one person on it? It has one person on it. And who's that? Mark Shuttleworth. Right. And he holds up At the technical board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Applause. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At what point does a benevolent dictatorship just become a dictatorship? When there he's the only person on the board? When no one likes him? Wow. <laughs> oh. Wow. I'm not, I didn't say no one likes him. I said a benevolent dictatorship becomes a dictatorship when no one likes him. Right, okay. But I mean, if, why do we not have boards with actual other people on it? Because they expire after two, not death. They, uh, they <laughs> because they're all taken out and shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough distro. <laughs> Descent in the ranks is dealt with swiftly. So uh, is, it, is it just that no one's volunteered to take up the positions? Yes, and you've got to ask why. Mm. Why is there, why they're not like, it used to be that on the, the community council, on the technical board, people would volunteer and we'd have a vote using Condorcet voting or some wacky yes. system that has lots of yeah, um, algorithm for picking the right person, the winner. Sounds but like a system designed by geeks. Yeah, but it works. Anyway, <laughs> there, it used to be that you had a, a big list of people who were volunteering, and there were you know, a pool of people you could choose from. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case now. It's not even a pool of people. There's just not an, enough people volunteering. Is that because they don't think they'll be listened to, though? Is this a, indicative of the whole one person driving it the way they want? Do they f are people not volunteering because maybe they think, well, what's the point? They're just going to ignore me anyway. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Uh, but also the fact that there aren't those people who have that feeling because there just aren't enough people. You know, we're, we're, we're failing to get people into those leadership positions. Maybe it's because they don't want to because there's, no, there's, there's nothing in it for them anymore. It's, it's, not, it's not interesting or fun anymore when you boot a CD and it all works. <laughs> it's like, well, what do I do now? That's, so that's just not Ubuntu is too successful, is what you're saying. It's too it good, too good at what it does. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Bruce, Bruce Byfield um, cited the lack of Ubuntu TV, failure of the crowdfunded edge campaign and privacy concerns. And it's sort of like, well, you can flip that round because the lack of Ubuntu TV, but you've now got Ubuntu Touch has come out. The failure of the crowdfunded edge campaign. It was a huge marketing thing. I mean, mm. no, I mean, in, a, in, in practice, when it came out, it's a huge marketing thing. It was in The Guardian and on the BBC. It was in all the mainstream media. It's not really a failure. It's just they didn't make the target. But then it seems so unlikely anyway. It depends on your, on your definition of failure, though, doesn't it? You know, some people would say 12 million is an awful <laughs> truckload of money. Are you failing upwards? Is that what you're telling us? <laughs> <laughs> We're failing in a really brilliant way. Yeah. So, yeah. so, Popey, where is the money that's was it for the Indiegogo campaign? Is it still in Canonical's bank account, ready for the next party? Or? <laughs> no, that 12 million went straight back to the people who, who backed. The, the thing with Indiegogo is you, you, give, the, you give the money for the, the perk. So, what was it, like six, seven hundred dollars, which is a lot of money. You give that money to Indiegogo and it goes in escrow with Indiegogo. We didn't see any of it. And then at the end of the campaign, if, you don't, if the campaign didn't reach the target, which it didn't by some margin, uh, everyone just gets their money back. And so we didn't, we didn't get anything. Okay, got a lot of exposure, like you say, on Guardian and BBC. But yeah, nobody got a phone. But that exposure also goes to the OEMs. So you can now say we had so much exposure in the market with these customers willing to pay so much money for the device. We can now come to you and say, hey, OEMs, this is this great software we've got. Let's make a phone around it. Yeah, and I hope that there are people in Canonical doing that. 
<laughs> Any OEMs in the audience who want to <laughs> talk to Popey afterwards about this? <laughs> Alan developed the killer app as well f- for getting people onto Ubuntu Touch. <laughs> yeah, or camp app. Yeah. yeah. In it's the car on the way up. It's oh. not available on Android or iPhone. So let me ask a question. Does, if put your hand up if you run Linux of some kind on a main like computer. Okay, so that's pretty much everyone, right? So put your hand up if at some point you used Ubuntu as a primary thing. Okay. So now put your hand up if you currently use Ubuntu as your primary. See that's gone down. Quite a lot. That's quite a big difference, yeah. Yeah. Okay, can the people who no longer use it just shout out what they switched to in one all at the same time? <laughs> one, two, three, go. Mint. No, I didn't catch a word of that. I think they said mint. Quite a lot of mint. That was a loud mint, I wasn't it? Mint quite loudly, and now I'm next to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Does the mint community need a podcast? I don't know, yes, on. they do have a podcast, the Mintcast. Mint, Mint UK podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. We're rebranding. <laughs> We're going to take over that space. We invented it. So we, we thought we might like to ask you, you guys, you lovely people, uh, whether you agree that Ubuntu is going down the pan as quickly as, um, as we suspect it might be. Or I don't whether think it's we actually s- called it going down the pan. <laughs> <laughs> Or whether it's going from strength to strength. So if you've got a, a point you want to raise, just stick your hand up and I'll run to you with a microphone because we don't seem to have a microphone monkey. There's one in the uh, I can do that. Okay, I've got, I've got We've got two radio mics. So. so what are the differences between Mint and Ubuntu, quickly? Mint uses a different desktop. It, it's built on Ubuntu and it uses a different desktop and has some different apps as well. It doesn't have Unity, basically. Well, I have to say that I'm a non-technical user. I can't program. I'm just Joe Safine Blogs who wants something that will work. And I was very happy with Ubuntu for a long time until Unity came in. And when I found that I had a quad core with a gigabyte of RAM that was running slower than a snail on Valium, at that point... Ubuntu just got taken off the machine. I actually <laughs> contemplated going back to Windows. See what you've done. See what you've done. We failed there. Epic, what, what do you use now? fail. Mint. Hi. Um, I was the editor of a magazine, and we did... Uh, <laughs> we... We thought we'd be very clever and do a feature called Has Ubuntu Lost It? Um, It didn't sell very well. And I think a lot of us have this debate about has Ubuntu lost it or not. We forget that we should just be supportive about the free software community. And I actually feel that we should just be positive about it. You know, Canonical are trying something different, and I, I respect them for that. They've changed the desktop, so it's become something else. We can all choose something else. But I've learned from my experience with Ubuntu Has Lost It is actually to be publicly facing positive. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, Tony, Tony, what was that episode title that we put on? Uh, so I don't know if you've ever noticed the UUPC episode titles are the name of a film, film with the last word replaced with the word Ubuntu. Yeah, it follows follows the partridge format. Um, Ten things I hate about Ubuntu. Yes, that one got. got Tons more downloads yeah. than any twice, others. Twice because the normal number of downloads. Because yeah. I think people thought it was us talking about why we hate Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't though. Yeah, I, I came to Linux through Ubuntu and um, have moved on to Debian just because it suits my needs and I want to be closer to upstream. Debian's not perfect, but what I do think about Ubuntu is that if it is our best chance of getting a mainstream adoption. There is just nothing close to the profile that Ubuntu's got for the whole of the. Uh, Linux world and Ubuntu Server rocks. Oh, Ubuntu Thanks. Server. Yeah, I've forgotten about that. This is turning into a bit of Ubuntu Anonymous. Yeah, I think we've badly misjudged the feeling among our audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I work for Red Hat, so you know, I admit that straight up, but I really don't have an opinion about Ubuntu as such, but. <laughs> but. <laughs> but we need, we need diversity and we need, we need multiple companies commercial companies producing distros. A world where there is only one commercial re- a Linux company is not what... Uh, it, pff, only one commercial Linux company <laughs> is not one that I think is a good thing. Well, you've got Oracle and Unbreakable Linux, haven't you? I was thinking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I think our community has told us that very, uh, very clear message that apparently Ubuntu is doing fine and it's great, and we we are all uh, we're all worried about nothing. So thank you very much for reassuring us because we were going to give up, but uh, maybe we'll carry on for a bit longer now. What do you think? Well, the two or three downloads that we get a week are, you know, uh, it's that's all right. It's worth it for that alone, isn't it? <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, we need to thank our wonderful sponsors who've helped to make this event happen. And um, we'd like to start off with uh, Liverpool John Moore's Open Labs specifically. And if you could give a round of applause for each sponsor, that would be wonderful. I don't know, hang on, sorry, before you start, I don't know. <laughs> Just give me a second. Work the crowd. I will tell you when to applaud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Andy's still around. Andy Goodwin, is he in the room? There he is. Andy and Alison, who's not here at the moment, and Sandra, who's the venue manager, and Liam, who's working really hard up in the box up there, um, and everyone else who's helped us out. So t- big, big thank you. So now you can applaud for John Moore's <laughs> University. Can I do this like bullseye? I kind of want to go into, and then, and then give you the second one. Super um, smashing toaster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here's what you could have won. Um, <laughs> so second, we've got Bitemark web hosting. Uh, Tim's Thanks, around. Tim. There he is. Uh, so a big thank you to Bitemark. Do you know, when they suggested making mugs with our own names on, I thought, that will never work. And then I came in and saw my own name on a mug, and I was like, that is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, okay, so next we've got uh, a subject close to your heart. Uh, Ubuntu, supported by Canonical. Uh, thank you to Ubuntu for giving us some money. Um, okay, we need to thank Transitive Technologies. Adam's here. Um, thank you, guys. They've given us a particularly nice prize for the raffle tomorrow, which is one of the new Nexus 7s. A new 32 gig Nexus yeah. 7. So get your raffle tickets if you haven't got them already. We're drawing that tomorrow mm-hmm. afternoon. It's Are we well allowed worth to win? It. Is that allowed? God, well, I, I am. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> Alan isn't technically an organiser <laughs> of the event, so I think he gets As I said, I'm reminded of the Father Ted episode where he rigs the raffle and starts off by going, I was at a raffle recently where the organiser actually won. <laughs> so just so you know, that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> there are also some Colo, uh, Glow e- Kobo Glow ebook readers and some actual real books and a Raspberry Pi and who gasped at real books? <laughs> And uh, some extra special prizes as well. And we have to say thank you to Scraper Wiki for the second uh, Nexus 7 as well. So thank you to Scraper Wiki. <laughs> okay. There's only a couple more to go, I promise. Thank you, Popey. I can't operate this. He told me to touch his nipple, and I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> it's, it was Maybe all later. A, it's all a bit wrong. Buy me a drink first. Um, all right, then. So um, we need to thank Liverpool Vision again, part of the council. Thank you to Liverpool Vision. <laughs> and finally, we have the battle of the databases again. So we have MongoDB. Thank you to MongoDB. And last but not least at all, thank you to Basho as well. It's quite handy that neither of them, neither Matt Ravel nor Laura yeah. CZ Tab are Although, here. Although, to be honest, I would have quite liked to have seen that as a matchup. Yeah. You know, one yeah. against the other. Yeah. Two base- databases go in, one comes out, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't have put much money on Matt, to be honest, but never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yep, ThoughtWorks have sent us lots of cool stuff, so thank you to ThoughtWorks. And we should say, if you go to ogcamp.org, all the sponsors are listed down the side. You can click on their logos and check them out and check out their lovely wares and so on. Yeah, do that even if you don't buy anything from them. Just click. Because they trace the clicks, yeah. all right, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. Over to <laughs> Okay, and we need to thank the very, very hardworking crew. So We Les, certainly do, yeah. This is you and your team. What do you want to say about them? The crew are magnificent. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
if you're in a crew T-shirt, should we get them to stand up? Should we get them to stand up? Yeah, come on, crew, stand up. If you're not standing up if already, if you're on the crew, crew just stand up please for stand us. up. All right. <laughs> These people were here at eight o'clock in the morning. Most of them setting up signs, stuffing bags. Some of them were here yep. yesterday, carrying stuff around for us. Um, seriously, it means that we don't have to do any work at all, and these guys yeah. do it. It's, well. it's amazing what these people will do for a T-shirt. Yeah. And the mug. Come on. The oh, travel mug. And they also got the pick of the stickers as well. Seriously, crew, we couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much indeed for coming along Thank and helping you. out. Thank you for listening and watching and cheering <laughs> <laughs> and generally coming along um don't forget we've got the raffle tomorrow night so go and buy your tickets uh probably not tonight but tomorrow yeah sounds like there's lots of cool prizes so and there's lots of surprise pr- prizes as well that mm. we haven't told you about yet are we doing the thing where someone has to run up and down and give the prizes not out again someone yeah you poppy <laughs> That, I, you, to be honest, I hadn't thought of that, but now you mention it, it's a really good idea. Well volunteered. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the raffle draw is going to be um, between four and five tomorrow. Tomorrow evening, yeah. No, sorry, between three and four tomorrow, because we finish at four finish tomorrow. At four. Yeah, so three o'clock tomorrow in here, raffle. But before then, we've got the party tonight at... The Racket Club. Dan. Yes. Um, so tonight we have uh, a place called the Racket Club, which you can look up. I will tweet the address and information, and Tony can retweet it for me on the old camp uh, thing. Um, yep, it's seven thirty onwards. We can get in there, and uh, eight o'clock food's going to be out. Don't go off and stuff your faces with loads of food in between because we've got meals paid for. Uh, it's going to be good. We've got some drinks paid for, not by a health company this time, and. Um, <laughs> And it's going to be really good. And it's about a, it is about a mile from here, and it's over towards the business district in town. So um, if you keep an, if you look on our website, it is on there. If you go to oddcamp.org, click on there. Uh, the information about the party venue it's on the map. Yeah, uh, on the map page. Yeah, yep. you have to. If you go to the, the venue page, it shows a map with the train stations in the venue. If you zoom out a couple of levels, then you see the party venue as well. <laughs> Don't go to the the one the party venue you see straight away is Leaf, where we were last night. Don't go there because we won't be there. No, lovely as it is. I don't think we failed in some way if we have to explain how to use a map. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's a little minus sign. You click on that. Yeah, so come and have food and and have a drink with us and and enjoy yourselves, and it's going to be great. Buy us a drink. (laughs) Yeah, buy some of us a drink. And then um, tomorrow morning, what time do the doors open? (laughs) I'm on the spot. I don't know. It's Um, hard. Is it 10? 10? 10? 10. 10, About 10. Doors at 10. Talks start at 11 again. So get you know if you come up with any ideas for talks tonight or any like, talks which you didn't get a chance to do today, then again, campfire manager, stick them on there. I'm going to be doing a talk tomorrow, um, and there's going to be talks in here tomorrow again. Um, and um, if there's more interesting lightning talks, I can do another lightning talk session. Um, let me know if you if you think that's a good idea. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, let's rock out and then let's go um, come back tomorrow with hangover. Yeah, and enjoy the sound of the cathedral bells tomorrow as everyone's got a hangover like they yeah. did last year. <laughs> well, look at that. The sun has come out in Liverpool. Who would have thought it? <laughs> Someone stole the clouds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. We'll see you tonight and we'll see you, ne- see you tomorrow. Cheers Bye. then. Bye-bye. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>